Welcome to Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time Part 7. Today I'm making an eccentric sheave. The parts that you can see on screen are from a Stuart No. 8 engine and originally the eccentric sheaves were made as a pair. But they weren't right and it was impossible to set the valve timing. What I need to do is make another eccentric sheave and make it so that the sheaves can be adjusted individually. Don't get confused with this episode, I'm actually showing the making of two sheaves because the original plan was to make a pair and fit them with grub screws but in the end I used the original one as eccentric sheave number one. Originally I thought the job was going to be simple, all that's left of the original eccentric pair is on the left hand side. When I start the machining operation in this episode I do start by making two sheaves but in the end I only used one. Let the fun begin. At the top of the image on screen at the moment is the original eccentric strap and eccentric sheave that was fitted to the engine before I fitted the reversing gear. The original eccentric sheaves were machined as a pair. I'm going to make one that's independently adjustable and here I'm measuring the diameter. All I need to do now is find a suitable piece of metal. And now it's over to the lathe where I'm fitting my independent four jaw chuck to the Boxford. And to tighten it in place, I generally use a piece of hardwood on the jaws like this. It's never a good idea to use the chuck key to tighten the chuck in place. The alignment begins. I'm adjusting each jaw until it goes midway between the two outer lines. And the four jaws should end up being equidistant from the centre. Here's a piece of steel going in place. A quick nip up of all the jaws to make sure it's tight. By rotating the chuck, and advancing the lathe tool towards the work, you will find out whether it's in the centre or not. For this job though, it just needs to be, well, approximately in the centre, because once I start turning it, I'm not taking it out of the chuck, and of course the turn part becomes exactly the same all the way down. I would, however, recommend that you try and get it somewhere near. With a DTI, or dial test indicator, it's possible to get the piece of metal 100% accurate in the jaws of a four jaw independent chuck. But it's really not necessary for this job. In this clip I'm turning the outer diameter to match the measurement that I obtained using the micrometer from the original eccentric sheave. And I'm not getting a very good finish on this piece of steel. It's not free cutting steel either, it's quite a hard piece. And the reason for this I think is because the lathe tool has done quite a lot of work and the tip's a bit blunt it's time to turn it round to a clean piece. But before I do that I think I'll take all the roofing cuts because the finish at this stage is unimportant. When I need a nice finish I'll change the tip and try again. Applying some oil to the job always helps and it's about time I did that so here we go. This is steam oil. This clip shows the quality of the finish after I change the tip and as you can see it's a lot more even and quite shiny. As I mentioned earlier, this is a hard piece of steel, it's not the free cutting stuff. So it should be hard wearing. I've changed the lathe tool for a parting tool, for the simple reason I need to cut this to shape, leaving a bit sticking up in the middle. Not a very technical term I know, but the bit sticking up in the middle of the eccentric sheave holds the eccentric strap in the correct position. In this clip I'm trying one of the eccentric straps in place to make sure that it fits and thankfully it does. And it fits on both of the eccentric blanks. Onto the bench now with the eccentric sheave blank and I'm marking the position to drill the hole for the crankshaft. This hole will be 5 16ths of an inch in diameter and 9 64ths of an inch from the centre. This will give the correct throw to operate the valve. In this clip the part is back in the chuck, in the same position that it was originally. I'm adjusting the position of two of the jaws until the centre drill makes a mark on the line in exactly the right place. And only when I get that part of it right, I turn on the power and centre drill the hole. Once I'd done that, it was time to drill the hole using a twist drill which is one imperial size under 5 sixteenths of an inch. Now the lathe is in back gear because I'm reaming the hole. This is a 5 16 of an inch diameter reamer. And all being well, I should end up with an accurate 5 16 of an inch diameter hole all the way through these two eccentric sheaves. 
When reaming, it's important to go slowly. If you go too fast, the hole's likely to be oversized, and I don't want that. And that's it for the four jaw work. So I'll refit my three jaw self centering chuck. First of all, I'm going to show you something which is very wrong. Here I am at my lathe, not a care in the world, and what I need to do now is part off one of the eccentric sheaves. This is a very bad thing to do, but I thought I would show you how to do it. As soon as the parting tool breaks through into the eccentric hole, it jams solid. I'll show that again in slow motion this time. The reason the tool post seems to move is because it's actually lifting the entire saddle off the bed slightly. I would not normally show this for a video or any other reason, particularly if the lathe was more powerful. But as the drive belts are slack, there's no great damage done. This seems to be a much safer way to do it. Remove the tool and use a hacksaw and speed up the video so it doesn't take too long. Note the large piece of wood underneath to protect the bed from the hacksaw. In this clip I'm taking a facing cut across the front of the eccentric that is still on the piece of bar. And that way, if I make a mess of the first eccentric sheave, I can come back to this one and it will be more or less machined properly. It just needs sawing off, turning round and machining on the other side. This is the eccentric sheave that I'm going to use on the engine. I'm taking a facing cut on one side for two reasons. One is to clean up the saw cut marks. And once I've done this side and then turned it over in the chuck, I can size the thickness to the finished dimensions. And that, my friends, is the end of this episode. I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.